All the problems of man stem from his inability to sit quietly on his own in a room. Something like that. This is from, I believe, Kierkegaard. All the problems of man stem from his inability to sit quietly in solitude. I meant to be off YouTube these days. I made a video on giving it up for 30 days. I buckled a few days out of tiredness and whatever. Gravitas swept me back in. Curiosity. And one looks at these riots and things and discontent. And I see that I see what YouTube builds, you know, and not the people that put things up, what they're discussing, the polarization of society into this group and that group. Life sucks because of these guys. If only these guys were away, everything would be cool, everything would be great. And all I can, and it's so easy to get swept into this. Really easy to get swept into it. And it, for me, it just causes anxiety. And then I discover God in my room. I discover God in my cell. In this small cell that the Lord has bequeathed me. And realize that I don't have to be in a monastery to find that. I don't have to be on Athos, although it'd be nice. This is from St. Augustine, actually. Picked it up in a local monastery. All our striving in this life consists in healing the eyes of the heart in order that it may see God. It's a very orthodox statement, of course. True theology is about purification in order to see the world as it really is. In order to experience the light of God which is shining in all parts, everywhere. It's our sins, our passions, our ignorances that act as cataracts. Thick cataracts blocking the light of God, but that light is shining in all places and in all times. And suppose I suppose that would be my um, advice to folk that are swept in to the anxiety of these times, to the passions of these times, is go into your room and there seek the Lord. Ask. Seek, knock, says the Lord in Matthew 7, 7, and the door will be opened. And you will find, and you, your prayers will be answered. But knock properly, sincerely, with humility, with the tears that God gives you. And then we'll find, and we'll find him. And when we find him, hallelujah, peace on earth, peace on earth. You know, I think I think of these guys here, the Carthusians. I've got a rake of their books, a good collection of their books. They eat one meal a day, pretty much. Two if they're lucky. They live in a cell, 23 hours or 24, something like that. Something, well, not quite, but 20 hours of 24. And when they're together, it's to sing praises to the Lord in an old cold chapel. Not to converse, not to brag, and not to pass time with nonsense. Sing psalms, sing hymns, and pray. And then back to the cell. And in their cell, they might be blessed to have a garden out the back to work with and to enjoy. Some of the happiest people alive, because they found God right where he's to be found in the still center of the searching heart 
Life doesn't suck because of a particular population group. Life doesn't suck because of a, of a political party. Life doesn't suck because of the work that I have to do in this world, particularly. These are crosses, definitely. They can be crosses. But life sucks because we've lost God. A God who is all around us, everywhere present. We are, as one Japanese poet put it, like men up to our knees in water. Pure, fresh water. Yet crying out for thirst. Restless. Our hearts are restless, O oh Lord. You have made us for yourself, O oh Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you, said the same St. Augustine. A little snippet from the book On Halfway to Heaven about the Carthusians. A very good book, beautiful book. They're very close to orthodoxy, not having been reformed for a thousand years. It's kept to a very eremitical and anachoritical life in the heart of the Roman Catholic faith, but apart, praying for the whole world. We know from the Old Testament and also from the New that nearly all the high secrets and deepest revelations come to people not in the tumult of crowds, but when they have found themselves alone. The servants of God, when they wish to meditate more deeply on some truth, or to pray more truly, or to escape from the things of this world in order to be ravished in the spirit, always avoided multitudes and sought the advantages of solitude. I've heard Father Zacharias say that uh, in truth, the de true deserts are very hard to find today, true solitude. But if I remember him saying in one of his talks that if we prepare ourselves as best we can in the conditions that we are in, then when we go to liturgy with that preparation, we receive the same grace as the great desert fathers because we receive Christ who is the same yesterday, today and always. There is nothing missing to us whatsoever. Charles de Foucault, he'd been made a saint in the Catholic tradition recently. Just look at the eyes of love and the softness of the heart. He wore his heart on his chest, as it were. The fruit of the desert. But they say that the reward of prayer is more prayer and that God answers prayer by giving us more prayer. And so if we start where we are, whether it's a tenement block in Glasgow or a cell on Mount Athos, if we truly, sincerely ask, seek and knock where we are, regardless of church or denomination, calling on the name of Jesus, surely the Lord will lead us because he is good and loves mankind. Forgive me, that's useful. In this series, go inside and you will find rest. Where else, of course, are we going to find it? And then when we have this interior peace, then the world is a different place and we can see with fresh eyes, with soft eyes, eyes washed with tears, to recreate the world with the help of God and with the saints. Amen. So be it.